Hello, my friend, and welcome to Wisdom Trek. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, your guide to wisdom and creating a living legacy. Thank you for joining us for our five-day-per-week wisdom and legacy building podcast. Today is day 586 of our trek, and it is Wisdom Wednesday. Every Wednesday along Life's Trail, we will dig for the nuggets of wisdom found in the book of Proverbs. Today, we'll explore Proverbs chapter 5 from the voice translation, which will give us a fresh perspective on this book of timeless wisdom. We are broadcasting from our studios at the Big House in Marietta, Ohio. In today's world, as it has been since the beginning of recorded history, it is so easy to fall into the trap of folly. That is to say, making decisions that are foolish instead of wise. We are all prone to this, and it is only when we seek out wisdom on a daily basis when we have any hope to make wise decisions. One area that is probably most destructive is when we make foolish decisions about relationships especially when it involves becoming intimate with others outside our covenant that we make when we marry. Solomon has much to say about this in Proverbs, and in this chapter, Solomon instructs his son with very direct teaching. Solomon made many foolish decisions in this area, so he had much experience to teach from. So today in chapter 5 of Proverbs, we will explore the importance of rejecting Lady Folly. And this is the eighth speech of a father to his son. There is a character in Proverbs, The adulteress, or referred to as the seductive woman, who we've had only a brief encounter with so far in chapters 2 verses 16 through 19, now in chapters 5 through 7, we get a much closer look at this woman, and it's not a pretty picture. This lady is a sham and will do us no good. The speech is actually somewhat frightening. The father calls the adulteress the seductive woman. As the passage implies, she is an already married woman, so beware. She might be persuasive with lips that speak honey-sweet words and words that are as smooth like oil, but in reality she is barbed and bitter. Follow her and she will take you down with her straight to the grave. The father goes on to use a contrasting set of images. The house of the adulteress is the root of destruction, but the home of the bride is the fruit of life. The father's speech flows with words comparing the wife to that of water, such as a cistern and fountain. Water in the Near East is particularly gratifying due to the extremely high temperatures. Likewise, the father implies a man's wife is water to his soul. The sexually thirsty man should always drink from his wife's body and be intoxicated with her love and never partake from another woman. The father tells his son, May you know true joy with the wife of your youth. This is a call to enjoy sexual intimacy only with your spouse. Drink from the pure waters of marriage and let the polluted waters of the adulteress go trickling by. If you are married, give thanks to your spouse as we read this chapter and ask yourself how you can rejoice greater in your love for each other. If you are not married, ask God to give you patience for that pure water. People are so easily seduced, and especially men. Everyone is vulnerable to sexual sins at some point or another, and history is strewn with the wreckage that results when the path of adultery is followed. And its steps are bitterness, death, instability, loss, and ruin. Time and again, these are the consequences for violating God's instruction. Wisdom recognizes the beauty of sexual intimacy. After all, God designed us as sexual beings. But for physical intimacy to retain the beauty of its design, it must be shared wisely. It is meant to be shared with someone who is your own. In marriage, the two become one, as Genesis 2.24 told us. So they belong together and belong to each other. In that safe place of belonging, one finds fulfillment. So a husband or wife must partake only the partner's body in love. To seek intimacy elsewhere is just foolish. Listen up and pay attention as I share with you from Proverbs chapter 5. My son, stay focused. Listen to the wisdom I have gained. Give attention to what I have learned about life so you may be able to make sensible judgments and speak with knowledge. You see, the lips of a seductive woman are sweet honey words. They are smooth like oil and enticing. But in the end, she is bitter, turning the stomach and rotting the soul. She cuts as deep as a double-edged sword. She leads you down the path that can only end in death. Her steps lead eventually to the grave. She does not travel the road of life and truth. She follows a wandering path, a rocky, pit-filled road that twists and turns, and she does not even know it. So, my children, listen to me. Do not stray from my advice. Stay away from her far away from her path. Don't even go near her door. Unless you are ready to hand over your reputation to someone else, unless you want to spend the rest of your years at the mercy of some cruel person. If you do, strangers will help themselves to your wealth, and everything you've worked hard to acquire will end up in someone else's hand. 
your life will end up with the groanings of remorse, of missed opportunities, and your flesh and bones will be eaten with sorrow, regret for worthless efforts. Then you'll say, why did I hate being taught? Why did I turn my back on correction? I disregarded all that my teacher said to me. I turned my ears away from their instructions. Now I am on the edge of complete and utter ruin in the midst of the community. Now here's what you should do to be satisfied. Go home and drink pleasures from your own cistern, your wife. Enjoy the sweet, fresh water that has been there all along, flowing from your own well. Take care. Should your own springs, your body, be freely shared? Should your streams of water satisfy anyone in the streets? Absolutely not. They should be kept pure for you and you alone, not for sharing with strangers. May the fountain, your sex life, be blessed by God. May you know true joy with the wife of your youth, she who is lovely as a deer and as graceful as a doe. As you drink in her love, may her breast satisfy you at all times. My son, why get caught up in some other woman and embrace the breast of a stranger? You see, the Eternal One sees our ways before Him. He watches every move we make and knows where those paths lead. The wicked will be snared by their own wrongdoings. Their flaws will tie their own hands, and they will be dragged through life by the cords of their sins. Because they have no discipline, their spirits die and their bodies will soon follow. Because they are immensely foolish, they wander lost and confused. That will conclude our exploration of Proverbs 5 for today. Next week we will continue on with Proverbs chapter 6. And each week we will explore a full chapter of Proverbs. I hope that you'll join us each week so that you can gain wisdom, insight, and understanding for yourself. All of these Proverbs provide us with rich wisdom, insight, and understanding on a myriad of life issues. And regardless of where you are on your faith walk, if the precepts of Proverbs are followed, your life will be rich and satisfying. I encourage you to take them and plant the seeds of wisdom in your own heart so that you'll reap a harvest of wisdom throughout your life. Tomorrow we will hike another short trail on our Wisdom Unplugged series where we will discover an inspirational wisdom quote. So encourage your friends and family to join us and then come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. That will finish our trek for today. If you'd like to listen to any of past treks or read the Daily Journal, they are all available at wisdom-trek.com. You can also subscribe at iTunes and Google Play so that each day's trek will be downloaded to you automatically. And thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most importantly, I am your friend, as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek Podcast and Journal. And as we take this trek of life together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and then leave a living legacy each day. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.